This week, we're going to create some of the most epic sewer tiles for your tabletop games. And that's coming right up this week on Tabletop Witchcraft. Hey there, welcome back to Tabletop Witchcraft. This week marks the start of our four week terrain series where we're going to be doing nothing but playing in the sewer. These sewer tiles are going to be pretty unique in the fact that they're made out of two inch XPS foam. They're six by six tiles, so they're going to be elevated up off the table. So you're actually going to feel like you're traveling through a sewer when you're playing on them. And that height allows you to have step downs and side chambers off in the sewer. Another cool feature with these is there's compartments on the bottom for LEDs so that you can plug them in here and your whole sewer system can glow while you're playing with them. All right, I hope you're excited as much as I am. So let's go grab some supplies and let's get crafting. All right, so you're gonna wanna start out by grabbing some two inch XPS foam and slap on a new um, Ulfa blade knife here. And it's hard enough to cut all the way through um, without kind of damaging the bottom of the foam. So with a new blade, let alone old one. So I go almost all the way through, snap it off here. These are gonna be six inch by six inch blocks and I go six and a half inches wide, which gives me a half inch to play, as you can see here on the Proxon, to go ahead and really get some nice straight square edges. You can now download my plans at itch.io. The link is in the description below. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure to cut exactly where I'm showing here because we're gonna um, go on the outside of these XPS foam blocks with uh, dollar store foam core. I find that it rolls and takes the texture a lot better with the foam rollers than the XPS foam does. Now go ahead and place the stencil on top of the foam and uh, trace out the channel right there. And that dotted um, little box that I just covered up with my finger, that's gonna be for the LED diode and battery compartment for later on. Okay, now there's two ways to go ahead and um, cut out the channel here. Uh, one, this way, if you have a proxon, cut the block in half. I'll show you another way in case you don't have a proxon and want to do this build later on. So go ahead and um, cut that half out uh, on the proxon there, on both halves, and then just go ahead and hot glue it right together. You're never going to see that seam once this build is complete. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and grab this uh, hot wire knife. And go ahead and draw in some stonework for the canal. And as you can see right here, I am going right up on that one uh, section, so I'm melting it. You're never gonna see that seam. And you're gonna to wanna to do two um, layers of this design. So this is the first one, and start your next one, alternating the pattern just like that so that your seams don't line up. And then I like to go ahead and roll this with the aluminum foil after I do the stonework. That way it rolls all the edges and it looks more natural. Okay, now we're gonna do the walking surface uh, for the tile. And this is gonna be a six inch long by two inch wide uh, piece of foam. So go ahead and strip uh, the cardboard or the paper off of the uh, dollar store foam core. And you're gonna go ahead and trace that out and then using this framing square, uh, go ahead and cut it out. And then uh, as you can see here, it's gonna fit nice right on top of the uh, XPS block. Now, if you're gonna do the diode uh, portion of this build, you're gonna wanna go ahead and um, take the hot wire knife and at that angle, push it right up through the block. All right, and now at the opposite angle, go ahead and follow this angle of a cut. It's at a 45 degree angle opposite the last cut we did. And this is gonna be for a battery compartment uh, for, the, uh, for the light. Try not to go all the way through on this. It's not a big deal if you do, um, because again, you're gonna be covering the top of this up with uh, dollar store foam core board. All right, now just popping this piece out, um, you can use this uh, clay sculpting tool or anything you got laying around, and there's your compartment. Now we're just gonna go ahead and burn in a little slot here. I'll put a link above right now that you can go check out my um, 
torch video, which will show you how I do my LED diode um, lights. And essentially we're just creating a slot to insert a diode and a battery right there. Now when the diode is um, coming through um, on this side here, we don't want to have the light come out at one spot. We want it to kind of disperse underneath the um, resin that we're going to pour. So we're just going to create a little opening here for the diode to go into, and it's going to create like a window. Now for the walking surface, uh, the playable surface, we're just going to go ahead and add our grid. Obviously if you don't use a grid system, skip this part. And then give it a little roll with the aluminum foil. And now I'm going at about a 45 degree angle with this uh, brick roller, just to give it a little bit more, I guess, uh, character than rolling it straight. And now we're gonna hot glue another piece to the outside here. And as you can see, this piece was um, rolled straight because that's more of the structural portion of the sewer wall. And now we're going to hot glue the top and go ahead and place this section of foam core over, as you can see right there, flush with the outer wall. And when you roll this uh, foam core, it tends to flatten out a little bit. So um, once it's glued on, you can then go ahead, grab your alpha knife and trim any edges. And then you can go ahead and just slap some Mod Podge on here. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and do the intersection tile. Uh, cut it out of the, uh, the stencil here, and as you can see, on the left and right side, there's no foam core. It's because this is gonna be surrounded by other tiles, so we're not adding any of that. All right, now we'll go ahead and connect the tops of all the channels right here, and we'll score it with an X-Acto knife. And now I'm going to show you the method for removing um, the section here that we don't want if you don't have a proxon. So just take an X-Acto knife and uh, you know, be careful and go in in a little bit of a sawing motion around the entire uh, canal. And that will give you a nice clean edge, which is all you're going to see, just the edges on this. Because everything else is going to be covered up by the resin. Then with your Ulfa knife, cut down about an inch as well, straight down. And when you get to the end, you don't want to pull it all the way through. You want to stop and press down, just like that. That way you don't risk cutting um, the edge of your, your block here. So again, just pull it back and press straight down. Now you can go ahead and really score out the center into a bunch of like one inch chunks, one inch by maybe half inch chunks. And just go ahead and pop them all out with your finger. Again, the only thing that really matters is the top inch along the um, canal edge. So pop all these out, and once they're all popped out, you can then go back and pretty much repeat the process until you get to the depth that you want. So you can see my edges look really nice and straight on those pillar sections. And now I'm just going through, and I'm going to go ahead and um, you know score some more of this out, and uh, we'll be all set here. Be real careful when you're sawing back and forth. Make sure to keep your hands away from, obviously, <laughs> where this knife is going to be coming up. All right, now, just like we did before, you wanna make sure to offset your brick pattern uh, with the hot wire knife. And, you know, go around the edge here and continue your brick work. That way it looks like a brick on the corner there. Okay, cutting out some uh, two inch by two inch pieces of foam core, you can then go ahead and place them uh, on your intersection tile making sure that those two edges right there are flush with the, um, the block. And I'm just using a framing square here just to make sure everything's nice and squared up. I use that tool for everything. All right, let's move on to the corner tiles. As you can see, this is a six by six inch block, but we wanna remove that one little sliver off that side. Um, there's actually two sections, the top of the stencil and that left side, we wanna remove. Again, because we're coating this in foam core. So this piece of the stencil that we're cutting out is going to give us the, um, the XPS block dimension. So we'll cut this out, we'll place it on the block, and then we'll, um, we'll use a marker to mark out where the canal is going to be. So cut that L section out and then cut this little section out as well. And again, you want to make sure you're on the dotted line for this step. 
All right, so as you can see, I traced out um, that top section, tracing out the bottom section now. Okay, now we're gonna go for the end wall here. As you can see, there's only one uh, section on the right side of this that's gonna have some uh, foam, uh, some foam core added all the way there on the right side. Pay no attention to the fact that it says left. Um, now, as you see, I'm gonna flip this over and you're gonna see um, that little bit of an overlap. Bam, right there. All right, so that is gonna be um, taken up by the, uh, the foam core. The left side, as you see here in a minute, right there is part of the canal where other tiles will connect to so that's not going to have the foam core so just flip keep that same stencil flip it over and you can reuse it right here all right again you can see the overlap Okay, then the same scoring method we did before, go ahead and pull that out. You know, if the top's a little messed up, don't worry about it, because uh, we'll take care of it when we roll it. And this is the walking surface. Now the walking surface is different from the other cuts because it's a little bit bigger. That way we have an overhang over the canal. And here I'm just scoring all of this uh, foam with an X-Acto knife, and then tracing it out with a pen for my grid. And like all the other ones, a little bit of hot glue, and you're gonna to want to make sure to uh, make sure that those corners are flush on this uh, tile as well. Only overhang is over the canal. All right, after we've mod podged everything, you're gonna to want to go ahead and take some. Uh, it's a country gray, and you want to uh, put this on really thin. You want 100% coverage, but you want it really thin. And once that's on there, make sure to get, you know, that little piece of the vertical wall. You don't have to go too far down right there because you're never going to see it. Now, we're not really dry brushing, but we're taking an apple barrel gray and we're just going like, to blotch it on. We're looking for like moldy areas, you know, areas that are built up with gunk because this is a sewer, right? I'm not really dry brushing it. I'm just kind of splotching it on. Now, we'll go ahead and we'll do the same thing with black, straight black. And you'll see, I'm gonna do a really light dry brush here uh, in just a second with the black. You don't wanna to go too crazy with it because when we hit it with the black wash, it's gonna knock it down quite a bit. Now we're gonna take some English Ivy and we're gonna color, uh, color. We're gonna paint this up now, again, splotching it. Uh, a little bit of green all over the place. Uh, we're gonna get a little bit more specific with the next green color here in a minute. And I go a little bit heavier on the green in the canal. All right, now this is a celery green. I believe this is deco art color. Um, doing a really good edge highlighting here and then um, almost dry brushing just around the perimeter of the canal to really make it look like that, that growth is coming up and out of the, the sewer. All right, once that completely dries, go ahead, grab yourself some black wash. Um, this is a homemade black wash, but Vallejo makes a pretty good one um, if you don't make your own. And uh, make sure to hit um, everything that you've painted. Don't forget to get in the canal as well. All right, now you want to be more uh, careful with your paint job here. I'm doing a really good job here, edge highlighting. I want a nice concentration, again, of the celery green along the edge of the canal. And once I like my edge highlighting, I'm gonna go ahead and feather it back, as you can see here, a little at a time. Um, and then finally, we're gonna go ahead with a lot of the paint off the brush, we're gonna go ahead and um, almost do a dry brush over that whole section. Again, just along the canal, right there. Don't forget to do this, obviously, to the other side as well. Okay, now we need to make a window um, that's going to protect our LED from the resin. So grab some clear um, toy packaging, um, cut a little rectangle out of that. Now down where the window is, you want to place a whole bunch of hot glue. I mean, really put a lot down there. Um, you're never going to see it. It's, it's not going to mess up your build at all. 
Um, what will mess up your build is not putting enough hot glue. So put a whole bunch there and then you're going to lay that plastic right into the hot glue. It's almost going to melt the plastic into it and almost form like a vacuum seal once you put it on there. And you want to really make sure that there's zero um, air bubbles or any gaps between the glue and the plastic here because you're in for a royal mess if you do this step and you pour the resin and there's a hole there. It's going to come out and destroy uh, your, your table or whatever you're working on. And if you're really concerned, you can go ahead, after this is pressed into place, you can see I'm using a, a Sharpie, um, you can place even more hot glue around the perimeter of this clear plastic as well. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and take some painter's tape and place it right over the canal. We're getting ready for a resin pour. And uh, this is a tip I saw from Luke Towen. Um, Basically, we're just going to go ahead and place some glue around the uh, the edge of this tape. And then using a Q-tip, we're going to smear it on there. I try to keep it so there isn't a bubble of glue like that, just in case it hardens. Um, you don't have this um, raised edge on the edge of the tile. So I just flatten it out, make sure it's um, on there, and you'll make sure you have no leaks with your resin. Now with this resin here, there's a link in the description below. Check it out to everything I'm using in the video to am for my Amazon links. But uh, you want to make sure you're measuring this by um, volume and not by viscosity. So measure it visually, not by weight. Now here I'm just adding some black green by Vallejo. It's an ink and some green um, ink also by Vallejo. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to use just a dab of the celery green that we use to edge highlight all of the tiles. You don't need a lot here, just a little bit. Now, go ahead and stir this in here. You want to stir it for two minutes straight, making sure to rub the edges so that you're getting in the bottom, so you're getting a really good, complete mix of the, uh, these two parts of the, the epoxy resin. Then scrape it into another container, throw out the stick as well, get a new stick, and give it another mix for another minute. Now, you're only supposed to pour this at one eighth of an inch thickness, but I gotta be honest, um, that, that would take a long time for all these different lifts here because we're going almost an inch thick with the, uh, the resin, uh, maybe three quarters of an inch. So I do about a quarter of an uh, inch of a lift at a time. Then right there with a little breath, you can get rid of all the bubbles. And, you know, I actually did try doing this whole pour in one shot. It can reduce the life of the resin, um, but we're not making furniture here. It's a sewer tile, so... Um, but it did get really hot and actually started smoking, so I don't recommend doing that. Um, I would go a quarter inch at the most per lift. All right, now this is a little uh, a tip here I got from Joe over at Encounter Terrain. Um, check his channel out. He's got some really cool water effects, and he's been doing some pretty cool trees lately. Um, this is just some Lexel um, caulking here, clear caulking um, for my uh, water effect. And you've got a few minutes uh, to work with this before it starts to set up on you. But just grab a barbecue skewer and um, give it some waves to it. Put some wavy lines in it. And uh, it's going to look really good when you're done. And the thickness of this caulking is only maybe about an eighth of an inch, maybe a little bit more in thickness. All right, now taking some burnt grass uh, flocking and some green grass flocking. I'm using a little bit more of the burnt grass. Um, we'll mix all this stuff together and we're gonna make uh, like some moss that's gonna be growing down here uh, in the sewer. And that's just regular PVA glue. All right, so give it a good mix here. Um, you wanna have it turn into, you know, pretty decent tacky paste. Now when you use this, smear it on to, you know, obviously whatever surface you want it on. Um, but you want to make sure not to smear it all on completely flat. You know, it's going to look like you just kind of painted it on there. So if you have some sections that are bubbling, some sections that are sticking out more, that's awesome. Just leave it like that because it's going to look more realistic. 
Now, when you go ahead and see, I got some on my finger here. I'm going to just wipe it on the walking surface or the playing surface for the miniatures. That, though, I would recommend, you know, it adds a nice effect, but press it on pretty flat. That way you're not rocking miniatures or anything else you're going to be putting on the tile. Then when you're done, just go ahead and grab some black paint and clean up your edges from anything that might have ripped off uh, when you took the tape off. And um, these things are pretty much all set and ready to go for, uh, for game night. So, I hope you like my take on these sewer tiles. The fact that they're elevated really gives you some opportunity for little side chambers for your players to explore, and it really gives you that feel like you're traveling down a sewer. Now, I've got three more videos coming out as part of this terrain series, but leave a comment in the section below and let me know what you would like to see to make this ultimate sewer terrain set. I did get one idea from Dan over at Dungeon Craft. Dan, thank you. If you haven't seen his sewer series, go check that out. He did a really cool um, video on that as well. Now, I have Patreon. Head on over there. Check that out. Nine different tiers. One of them is called the Contractor Tier, where I will actually mail you my plans. So you don't have to go to Drive Through RPG and download those. I'll mail those directly to you, free of cost, with the uh, Contractor Tier subscription. Thank you for all those patrons out there that are supporting me. And if you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like and a subscription would be awesome. And until next time, I'll see you around.